So James and Yui, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Let's get started. Hi, um, my name is Yui. Um, it's actually a shorter version <laughs> <laughs> of my name, much easier to pronounce. Um, I'm Manipan Girati Urai. Um, I recently joined ADM for about six months now. Uh, I came from a CPG industry. I'm working in wide varieties of, um, you know, whether or not going to be prepared meat industry, a nutritional industry, or even, you know, some of these leading company um, in whether or not going to be dairy or plant-based alternative type of products. So I'm really, really excited uh, to be part of ADM and be part of these, you know, food revolution, how we can help to do from the other side as a, you know, food product developer, food scientist, incorporate our knowledge um, in this area and help to further change this drive that everybody's working towards this food supply chain. I'm James Scher, uh, Director of Sales, Specialty Sales for our Milling and Baking Solutions Division. Been with the company for about 18 months. Uh, came with a background in sales and marketing for a range of food companies, both in the dairy space, uh, baking space, and uh, flour space as well. My job here at ADM, brought on about 18 months ago, is to build sales and opportunities to expand our portfolio beyond patent flour. Uh, beyond the commodity flour business, what are the specialty products that our mills uh, can produce, as well as one of my responsibilities is taking the lead on our sustainability regenerative ag and carbon neutral programs within the milling and baking solutions division. Thank you so much for those introductions, and we're really excited to dig into two key areas here today. We're going to talk about the carbon neutral flour business, as well as UE's role in food product development and food innovation at ADM. But I did think it was important to take a little uh, a step back and think about some of the global consumer trends um, that the food and agricultural space is facing. And ADM made the prep very easy. They had an incredible document they pulled together. You can check out their website. But these might be good trends to note um, for everybody in the room. So ADM is thinking about nourishment for the whole self, they're thinking about plant-based lifestyles, microbiome as the root of wellness, clean and transparent sourcing, the humanization of pets, precise and res responsible animal feeding, sustainable goodness, and advanced renewables and biosolutions. And I think I, I was drawn to these eight key trends because they're all very similar to areas that we're working on here at the University of Illinois. So, a nice parallel, but um, let's dig in a little bit more. Uh, James, it's fascinating, the, the news that came out from ADM last fall, a big industry first, that you now have a completely carbon neutral milling business. Um, you and I had an opportunity to talk more in detail about this, and it's amazing when you think about the supply chain that ADM is involved in and the impact that you have from the farmer all the way to the end user of the flour at the loading dock. So mm -hmm. talk us through the process, what was it like well, how big of a lift is it? And as other companies think about doing this, um, what are some suggestions you would have? Sure, it's, uh, it's been quite a journey. About a year ago, I was challenged uh, in my role to determine if we could get to carbon neutral for our flour mills. Uh, we had the benefit of a uh, kind of a groundbreaking initiative that ADM actually entered uh, into with the U of I and the Department of Energy to implement a carbon sequestration program in Decatur, Illinois. In that project, we capture carbon emitted by our um, mills and facilities in, in Decatur. Uh, we capture about half a million metric tons a year. We concentrate that and pipe it about a mile and a half, two miles underground into the Simeon sandstone layer. Mm -hmm. um, this project was an experiment. It was a test of concept to see if this could actually work and actually achieve the goals and the, uh, um, and the objectives of the test. And we're happy to say that it has turned out tremendously successful, kind of um, exceeded all expectations, I think, both for the university, the Department of Energy, and ADM. And in fact, we're actually expanding that and going to start to um, pipe carbon from Iowa over to our facility in Decatur to capture and sequester. That's the foundation that we built our work to get to carbon neutral for the mills upon. The other two steps to make that come to life were um, to demonstrate that we are actually preserving and reducing our energy usage in our mills. So over the last 10 years, We've implemented a number of uh, projects to reduce our energy usage in the mills by about 25%. And then the final leg of that stool was to purchase renewable energy certificates 
to demonstrate that the energy that we do have to buy and use in the mills, that we're making an effort to make that green energy as, best, as uh, uh, complete as possible. So that gave us the foundation of the carbon neutral mill footprint. And we're, as, as uh, we pointed out, we're happy to say that it applies to our 22 mills in the US. We're working to expand that into Canada um, this year. The next step in the process is to get to carbon neutral flour. And in order to achieve carbon neutral flour, we need to overlay that carbon neutral mill claim on top of the regenerative agriculture projects and initiatives that we're doing in the field with growers across the United States. Working with the growers to implement things like cover crops, um, no-till, I think Chris laid out a lot of what we're wor what's going on on the farmer side to get to that carbon reduction in field. Through those efforts, we can get to a point where we can get to a negative carbon footprint on wheat certified and verified by third parties that then compensates for that little bit of carbon that comes from the trucking from the field into our mills to get to that level of having a carbon neutral wheat product at our doorstep. And again, it's groundbreaking. Nobody else has, has done this yet. Um, we're seeing tremendous demand by our customers to help them achieve their goals of carbon neutrality. I think most of those uh, customers are putting a goal out there of 2030, uh, 2050 to be completely carbon neutral. There's no way for those customers, for the, our food industry to achieve that without addressing their scope three emissions. Um, and what we're seeing more and more is that although there's a need for carbon offsets, uh, the, the demand is just too high, there's also a real need for that carbon inset and for our customers to be able to demonstrate a direct linkage within their supply chain for efforts that they're making to reduce their carbon footprint. And we're able to bring that to them um, through our directly link, direct linkage to the farms. Thank you so much, and I think it's amazing, um, even as Chris brought up earlier and you mentioned, that ADM truly is capturing the carbon. It's not getting out into the atmosphere and really making that impact from the field all the way to the fork. So thank you for describing that, a fascinating process. UE, thinking about how consumers are becoming more aware of, the, of carbon and taking steps to reduce their own environmental impact, how does that drive that you, the work that you're doing in food innovation and wholesome nutrition, and how are you kind of um, approaching food product development now? I think as James has addressed it, um, I think most of our consumer, when we're looking at a food product that's available in the market, one of the things that our consumer have as that information is, you know, their food packaging, right? We're looking at the nutrition facts panel, we're looking at the ingredient deck, uh, decoration. When you read through all of those words, um, in some food application or food product, they can be a shorter, list of ingredients, it can be a longer one, but when you're looking at the amount of energy and effort of many of us who are working in this food supply chain, this is a tremendous effort. The way we, you know, extracting our food together, the way we put our food back together. Um, I mean, for me as a scientist, I really want to leverage the knowledge um, that I have learned in the field and then rethink how can I help to formulate our food in much more efficient way. Um, I mean, there's a lot of energy involved. We have to think further out. You know, we're talking about we, we could run into some food security in 2050 where, you know, we could have this 10 billion population and the way we're growing our food today. Um, you know, we don't have enough land, you know, we generate this, you know, carbon footprint. Um, and for me, as someone who helped to put this product together and serve all of our um, consumer, this is something that I feel really strongly that I can help to contribute and rethink how we can make it more efficient, how can we leverage what we learn and what we know and then apply it accordingly, right? There may be some ingredient that, you know, instead of taking it all apart to these different fraction, uh, to these different component and re put back together again, um, how we can do it more efficient way, applying the science that we learn and know and work directly with the farmer events, right? To understand how we can help to build a better ecosystem. Because I mean, one of the demand that consumer has can also have this ripple effect throughout the supply chain, but it's coming from all of us demanding, wanting to help to build a better, you know, a better world but we also care about ourselves and, and our planet. Thank you so much. I, I noted a couple of the trends earlier. I think it's really exciting seeing the plant-based lifestyles. Um, so Yui, maybe talk a little bit more about the work ADM's doing in the plant-based area. 
Um, I mean, you know, we all experience this pandemic uh, area as well. You know, the consumer trend also have changed tremendously. And when we're looking at the consumer, you know, it's also depending on geo geography, where we live, the culture where we lived in, uh, the local food that we, you know, familiar with, the accessibility of our food. You know, in some area, there may be a, a group of consumer who may not have this access to a lot of animal type products. Um, they may be malnourished um, because they, they won't have this access. So for us to be able to provide a nutrition um, through these plant-based lifestyles also help to also promote the, con the, the newer consumer, uh, you know, that we call flexitarian, you know, they, they want to be part of this uh, revolution to also help um, to make the change. Uh, it's part of the, th the thing that, you know, they also feel good about it when they start adopting those type of diet um, because, you know, everybody help um, to, to make this change and further drive the industry um, and, and you can start seeing more changes throughout the food supply chain. Thank you so much. James, a question back to you. Thinking about um, the U.S. mills and now being uh, carbon neutral, and you talked a little bit about how your customers are really interested and it's driving some demand. Can you talk a little bit more about that? How is this changing some of the conversations you're having with your customers? Sure. I think, you know, you look at the pressure that's happening in our industry, the food industry, and the, I mean, in, I guess in in industry in general to reduce carbon footprint and to demonstrate some progress. You know, for a while we were really focused on regenerative agriculture. Consumers don't really understand what regenerative agriculture means. It's hard for the average person in the grocery store to really translate that into, am I doing something to benefit the environment? Carbon neutral gives that claim and a little bit more um, uh, understanding by the consumer that they're actually having an impact. So as you look at our customers, are, are reaching out, they're getting pressure both from their um, stockholders, their shareholders, uh, their customers, the industry, and now even their employees to make an impact on the environment. One of the easy ways for them to do that is to demonstrate changes in carbon footprint and their carbon, um, their carbon footprint, I guess, in general. In order to get there, you know, they focus certain, on the easy things first, changing light bulbs, reducing some motors, that sort of thing. But in order to really achieve this idea of trying to get to carbon neutral, again, they have to get to that scope three. So that's where they come to us and talk about how can we help them achieve that goal? What can we do in their supply chain to help them get to that carbon neutral, or at least demonstrate improvements in their carbon footprint? Now through Regen Ag, you know, as Chris pointed out, we can demonstrate a reduced carbon footprint from the field, from those crops. Um, but again, without wrapping that up and getting to that carbon neutral, it still leaves a big gap for those folks. Um, and through getting to carbon neutral mills, we're able to strengthen that message. The problem that we're facing, and I think the industry as a whole, is how do you pay for this? Mm -hmm. As Chris pointed out and others have pointed out, it's not free to the farmer. It's not cheap to go and add cover crops or to move to no-till practices. They have to change their equipment. They have to pay for seed. There's a perceived higher risk level. Uh, and growers are a stubborn bunch of folks. They've been in the business for a very long time. They don't need somebody like ADM coming in and telling them how to do their business. So how do we encourage them? How do we educate them? How do we give them the information so they can get to that decision themselves is one of our challenges. Um, and through incentive programs where we're helping to offset those costs, whether it's helping to offset the cost of new equipment purchases, uh, seed uh, acquisition for cover crops, and then guaranteeing them an outlet for their crop. When they do grow that crop, they can turn to ADM, we'll purchase that from them. And then for us, we push back on our customers and say, if you're serious about this, if you want to achieve carbon reduction, if you want to achieve a commitment to improving the soil and, and water and air quality, then invest in it. And we're going to take that investment, we're going to ask you to share in that cost back to those growers to encourage these changes. And it's worked pretty well. The struggle that our customers now are having is cons convincing the consumer that there's value to this and that the consumer needs to pay more. We're in a period right now of high inflation, food costs are going up. Our customers are caught in a tight spot of understanding how do I pass this cost onto the consumer 
and justify it. And it's, it's, it's a problem that we're all facing right now is that there's a demand to make these changes, but there's a, a disconnect on how do we pay for these changes as a society. Um, and it's a real challenge. And, you know, we've, we've had some success, um, and it's part of an education process. I think, you know, there's some, been some push as to how do you communicate that out to the customer. And I think this idea of the carbon footprint reduction is finally resonating with the consumer. And, you know, all the data and statistics show consumers will pay for it, but it's hard to get our, um, some of our customers over that hump. Thank you so much. I know we probably don't have all the answers today as far as how to market this and, and price it in the market, but great to bring it to light to the group here. If I did, I'd be the president of ADM. That's right. And I'm not, tell so. Juan, tell Juan, I'm, oh, you're coming. <laughs> well, we'll wrap up here. I do want to highlight Yui and James and I had an opportunity to share dinner together last night, and I said they are making history here in Research Park at ADM in the Innovation Center. Um, we're so excited. Yui, do you want to just talk a little bit about the new space that ADM is creating here? Yeah, so hopefully by um, mid-year, um, we can have this uh, Food Innovation Center open at the research park, so we are very, very excited about it. Um, those areas would be designed so you can do kind of food prototyping. We have a demo kitchen, we have a focus area. Um, we would love to be working closely um, with many, many talent here um, at that UIUC. Um, you know, I think, also have that type of close collaboration and work closer with even new generation as well to really understand what they value, what problem that the food industry is also trying to solve. I think it's it's such a great privilege to, uh, to be part of this program and you know be at the research park at UIUC, so thank you. We're very excited about it. You, we made a great point. This is gonna give ADM an opportunity to be very close to the next consumer, the next generation of consumers being right here, so. Thank you both. Was there any questions from the group? All right, well, thank you. We'll close it up. I appreciate you joining us today and um, enjoy the rest of the day, everybody. Thanks.